Chapter 901 A New Girlfriend, Xi Jinlin was surprised to see Leng Shouting and the beautiful mature woman by his side. Isn't Leng Shouting's girlfriend Ganing? Didn't he come here for Ganing as well? Why is he holding another woman's hand? Isn't he afraid that he'll run into Ganing in Gongyo Hotel? Ganing still looked like Tang Aining now, so Xi Jinlin failed to recognize her. Gao Yi and Giao Ya weren't with Ganing now either. Hi, Shouting. Xi Jinlin greeted Leng Shouting but felt a little uneasy. Hi, Leng Shouting said. Xi Jinlin knew Leng Shouting very well, and he understood that Leng Shouting wasn't talkative. And this? Xi Jinlin looked to Ganing. My girlfriend, Leng Shouting replied, but didn't tell him her name. Oh, right. Xi Jinlin was shocked, but didn't show it on his face. He wondered whether Leng Shouting had a new girlfriend right after breaking up with Ganing. Since when did Leng Shouting become a womanizer? Xi Jinlin was confused. Seeing Xi Jinlin's reaction, Ganing was amused, but she still decided to joke with him. What? I am Shouting's girlfriend. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. Xi Jinlin denied at once. Well, since you're Shouting's friend, why don't we dine together? Ganing said. When Xi Jinlin was about to decline, Leng Shouting opened his mouth again. Come on, join us. He grew up with Xi Jinlin too. Although they weren't as close as he was to Xi Jinlin, they were still good friends. Sure. Xi Jinlin had to accept. Afterwards, they took the elevator to the fifth floor, but Xi Jinlin kept thinking about Leng Shouting and Ganing. Ganing, when are you leaving? My father is inviting you to join us for lunch tomorrow in our family's house. He sighed and said all of a sudden, What, Ganing? Hearing that, Xi Jinlin was surprised. He stared at Tang Aining who looked totally different from Ganing. He sighed and gave Xi Jinlin a glance. She didn't understand why Xi Jinlin reacted so strongly. It seemed like he knew Ganing, but was not familiar with her. In fact, Ganing wasn't in her usual appearance now, so others failed to recognize her. Before long, he sighed and figured it out, then laughed out loud. Oh. You didn't know that she is actually Ganing, right? Are you Ganing? Xi Jinlin observed Tang Aining, but still couldn't believe it. Did she disguise herself? Ha ha, I am Ganing. Ganing couldn't help but laugh as well. How is it possible? Xi Jinlin rounded his eyes in shock. He had been through many shocking things before, but he was more shocked than ever this time. There is a powerful technique in the world called makeup. Ganing said. At this moment, the door of the elevator opened, and Leng Shouting held Ganing's hand, walking out without delay. He sighed and Xi Jinlin followed them at once. Wow, it's so amazing. Xi Jinlin said. He had to admit that he was amazed by Ganing's skill in wearing makeup. To be honest with you, I also disguised my features, Ganing said. Makeup wasn't enough to completely change her appearance. I'm short of words now. Xi Jinlin said. A while later, they walked into their private room, and he sighed and told the waiter to serve them dishes. Why don't you remove your makeup now? Leng Shouting said to Ganing. He felt uncomfortable facing Ganing while she had another woman's appearance. Sure. Ganing smiled, then stepped towards the washroom. Once Ganing was gone, Xi Jinlin said, I thought that you got a new girlfriend. It'll never happen. Leng Shouting said with determination, like he was making a vow. Feeling Leng Shouting's loyalty and sincerity, Xi Jinlin was impressed. As Leng Shouting's good friend, he also hoped that he could live a happy life. However, he didn't know much about Ganing yet. She was so young after all, and anything could happen in the future. If Ganing broke up with Leng Shouting, it would be super hard for him to fall in love with another girl. In that case, it was highly possible that Leng Shouting would stay alone for the rest of his life. Has she visited your family? Xi Jinlin asked. Not yet, Leng Shouting said, and felt a little upset. She won't visit my family until she's studying in university. From Leng Shouting's answer, Xi Jinlin sensed that he must be deeply in love with Ganing. Have you visited her family? Xi Jinlin asked again. Xi Jinlin thought that it wasn't very likely because Ganing was still young and her family probably wouldn't allow her to have a boyfriend at such an early age. Yeah, I have, Leng Shouting said. Hearing that, Xi Jinlin was astonished. At the same time, he felt happy for Leng Shouting because it proved that Ganing took Leng Shouting seriously. Are her family supportive? Xi Jinlin asked with concern. Yes. Leng Shouting said. Xi Jinlin was relieved. Leng Shouting understood that Xi Jinlin cared about him, 
so he was very patient in answering his questions. Chapter 902, Leng Shouting is jealous again. Two minutes later, Gao Yi and Giao Ya joined them for the meal, and the dishes were all placed on the table as well. Gunning tied her hair in a ponytail after removing her makeup, but didn't change her clothing. Seeing Gunning's original face, everyone thought that she looked better now. Wow, Gunning, your skin looks so good. He Sian was envious of how smooth and shiny Gunning's skin was without any makeup. Even though Gunning was just 18, and her skin wouldn't be bad as a young girl, it was rare to see such flawless skin. I've been using Koozie all the time, Gunning said, and advertised her skincare brand. Really? He Sian got excited. Koozie, I heard it's a very popular skincare brand in the capital now, Xi Jinlin said. My mother. My aunt and my cousins are all using it. They told me that it's even better than those famous international skincare brands. To be honest with you, I'm a fan of its founder. Xi Jinlin admired the founder of Kuzi very much. What he didn't know was that its founder was right in front of his face. Since Xi Jinlin wasn't aware of that, Gunning remained silent because she had no intention to show off. I think that Kuzi, given its unusually good effects, is qualified to be an international brand without doubt, but its prices are a little lower now. Many consumers use money to measure the quality of goods nowadays, so the majority of noble ladies and celebrities might not choose Kuzi because of its low prices. Xi Jinlin was interested in the skincare market. He was a businessman after all. There is nothing which can be liked by everyone in this world, except money. Rich people only account for a small amount of the population on this planet so I think its prices are acceptable in most people's eyes. For example, let's say that there are 100 women, and celebrities along with noble ladies account for only 10% at most. About 20% are poor females who can't afford it. In that case, 70% are still potential customers. Small cities are excluded, and the average salary of office workers is above 7 or 8,000 yuan in big cities. A set of skincare products is 3 or 4,000 yuan, which can be used for 3 or 4 months. Sometimes, it could be half a year. All in all, it costs less than 1,000 yuan every month for them to buy kuzi. Women are all willing to spend money on their appearances, but it isn't very likely that they will spend too much on skincare products. Among the 70% potential female customers, around 20% might think that it isn't necessary to spend thousands of yuan on skincare products, so only 50% of them could be loyal customers of Kuzi once they try it, Gunning said. Gunning planned to set prices which were acceptable in most people's eyes, because there was a huge gap between the rich and the common people after all. I think that people who value quality most won't pay much attention to the prices, Gunning said at the end. You're really good at running a business. Xi Jinlin was greatly surprised. Actually, both of them were right, but their target consumers were different. Let's enjoy the meal. Leng Shouting interrupted them. He was jealous when Gunning talked too much with other men, and hated being ignored. Gunning sensed Leng Shouting's dissatisfaction. So she began to eat instead of talking to the others. Xi Jinlin also shut his mouth. Since Zuo Jiang Qi was caught and He Seang was back, the next step for the He family was to pay He Hong Yuan back. He Hong Ji had already sent people to watch He Hong Yuan, but for He Seang's safety, he didn't do anything to hurt him yet. He Seang was back now, so there was nothing he had to be worried about. He Hong Yuan, however, didn't know that He Seang was back. So he was still searching for He Seang on the island. He believed that he could compete against He Hongji as long as he held He Seang hostage. Therefore, he still stayed in his house. In a villa in the suburb, He Yixi and He Hong Yuan were watching TV in the living room. All of a sudden, they heard noises of fighting from outside, and immediately walked out to have a look. Seeing their bodyguards fighting against a bunch of strangers, they were terrified. Dad. He Yixi hid behind He Hong Yuan in fear. Their maid also ran back to the kitchen and didn't dare to show up again. Stop it, stop it now. He Hong Yuan was furious, but none of them listened to him. The group of strangers didn't stop until those bodyguards were all beaten down on the floor. Who are you? What are you doing here? He Hong Yuan questioned them. At this moment, a door of the car that was parked by the gate of the villa opened and He Hongji got out of it. The second He Hongji appeared, 
both He Hong Yuan and He Yixi realized what was going on, because they didn't know that He Hong Ji had already found He Siang, they were confused as to why He Hong Ji dared to come. He Hong Yuan clearly knew that He Hong Ji was aware that he was the mastermind behind the scheme, but He Hong Ji didn't have any proof. He still believed that he could use He Siang to threaten He Hong Ji. Chapter 903 He Hong Yuan is core. He Hong Ji hadn't come to He Hong Yuan's place before precisely because He Hong Yuan had control of He Siang. However, things were different now. He Hong Ji, what are you doing in my place? He Hong Yuan questioned He Hong Ji. What do you think? He Hong Ji stared at He Hong Yuan with a cold face. How could I know what you are doing? He Hong Yuan said. He Hong Yuan, you abducted Siang and hurt my hearing on purpose. He Hong Ji raised his voice. He Hong Yuan squinted, but denied it. Do you have any proof to prove that? I don't, but I know it's you, He Hong Ji said. Well, interesting. Since you don't have any proof, it's slander. He Hong Yuan argued. Really? He Hong Ji sneered. I don't care about proof, because I know that you've done everything you could to hurt my family, and you must pay for what you've done. You He Hong Yuan was mad. He Hong Ji, you don't have proof and it's illegal for you to hurt me. He Hong Yuan said that because he was confident that He Hong Ji couldn't find any proof. I don't care. He Hong Ji sneered again, then gave an order. Take them back to the He family's ancestral shrine. Once they were taken back to the He family's ancestral shrine, it would be family affairs. As long as they weren't killed, even the police couldn't interfere in it. He Hong Ji could also lock them up forever. In fact, He Hong Ji had no intention to kill them because it wasn't a good thing after all and would damage their family's reputation. Yu He Hong Yuan wanted to struggle, but he was just an old man. In the end, He Hong Yuan and He Yixi were caught. Hong Fai didn't pay attention to the He family's problem at all, because he was still resting in his house recovering. To be specific, he was having fun. He Yixi told him that she wasn't free today. So Hong Fai called two prostitutes over to serve him. He had sex with them till he was exhausted, then went to have some sleep before he had sex with them again. He didn't feel bored at all. In the evening, Hong Fai suddenly remembered the He family's problem and called He Yixi, but he couldn't get through to her. He then called his older brother asking about the He family's condition. Hong Fai told him that He Hong Yuan had lost the competition and warned him not to socialize with He Yixi anymore. Hong Fai listened to Hong Quan this time. Actually, Hong Fai didn't have much affection towards He Yixi, he just liked her performance in bed when they had sex. He knew that his family's benefits were much more important than a girlfriend, so he decided to dump He Yixi. He didn't lack women anyway. Hong Shishan thought for a whole day, but still didn't want to apologize in person. Instead, he called He Hongji that afternoon. Although He Hongji was disappointed in Hong Shishan, he knew that he shouldn't have a grudge against the Tandyui. The Tandyui was an influential gang in HK after all, and it could be very helpful in the future. He Hongji wouldn't stop cooperating with them in business, but they wouldn't be as close as usual anymore. Gunning and Leng Shouting left together after the meal. Gao Yi and Giao Yi also went on a date, while He Siyan and Xi Jinlin were left alone. However, he Siyan needed to go home, and Xi Jinlin had to go to an appointment as well, so they didn't care about it. Oh, when will you go back to your city? Xi Jinlin asked before they left. We'll leave for City M tomorrow, Leng Shouting said. Great, I'm going to the capital tomorrow, remember to call me when you're both in the capital, Xi Jinlin said. We will, Leng Shouting said. After that, they separated. Why don't we go for a walk? Gunning said to Leng Shouting. Sure. Leng Shouting held Gunning's hand while walking out of the hotel. Cao Wenxin took a plane to the capital to visit Xinbi that afternoon. Xinbi stayed in the capital these days, and Cao Wenxin was free, so she went to visit him. Xinbi was waiting for her when she got off the flight. They went to dine together later, but ran into Yu Wenjing and Yu Wenkang in the restaurant. Yu Wenjing didn't leave the hospital until today and Yu Wen Kang brought her out to have some delicious food in order to cheer her up. To his surprise, they encountered Xinbi and Cao Wenxin. The second Yu Wenjing saw Cao Wenxin and Xinbi, she burst into tears. Wenjing. Yu Wen Kang stopped her. Yu Wenjing understood that she shouldn't argue with the girl beside Xinbi, so she had to swallow her sadness. Xinbi's and Cao Wenxin's moods were affected when they saw Yu Wenjing, 
but they directly ignored her. After the meal, they went for a walk, then Xinbi brought Kao Wenxin back to his apartment. In the beginning, Kao Wenxin was unwilling to go to Xinbi's place, and told Xinbi to send her back to the Huangdong Hotel, but Xinbi disagreed. Xinbi said, we can only share some time together this afternoon and tonight. If you chase me away right now, our date will be too short. Kao Wenxin understood that they didn't have much private time, so she nodded in the end. Nevertheless, if they stayed alone in the same room, it was unavoidable to have sex. Although they had already made love before, Kao Wenxin still felt shy and uneasy thinking about it. Am I your boyfriend or not? Xinbi looked sad. Of course. Kao Wenxin said. Go back to my place with me, please. Xinbi almost begged. Kao Wenxin didn't want to hurt his heart, so she agreed. Xinbi beamed with happiness. Chapter 904 Skilled Gamblers Gather Together Once they were in the room, Xinbi pressed Kao Wenxin to his chest and kissed her with passion. Wenxin, I love you. Xinbi's warm breath sprayed across Kao Wenxin's neck, and she felt slightly aroused. Do men always say that when you want to have sex, and then forget everything that you just said afterwards? Kao Wenxin said all of a sudden. She was a little upset now because she remembered what her friend's ex-boyfriend had said and done to her friend before. The man had said countless sweet nothings to her friend and made many promises, but dumped her friend right after they had sex. Xinbi was struck dumb for a second. He sensed that Kao Wenxin wasn't in a good mood. It seemed that she disliked hearing sweet nothings when they were kissing and touching each other sexually. Xinbi knew that Kao Wenxin hadn't been betrayed before, because she was still a virgin when they had sex. So it was very likely that she was affected by something that happened to her friends. Wenxin, I understand your worries, but I treat you very seriously. Although we've only been together for a short time, I'm certain that you're the girl I want to spend the rest life with. If you don't believe my words, you can trust my uncle and your aunt, Xinbi said with sincerity. In case Kao Wenxin didn't believe him, he used the influence of his uncle and Kao Wenxin's aunt. It was true that they had only been boyfriend and girlfriend for a short time. But everything he said everything to Kao Wenxin was said in all sincerity. They might not be deeply in love yet, but Xinbi made up his mind to spend the rest of his life with Kao Wenxin. In addition, they weren't teenagers either, so neither of them had the intention to play around. If it was possible, Xinbi would be willing to propose to Kao Wenxin right now. In fact, Kao Wenxin believed every word that Xinbi told her. Girls lost their reason when they were in love after all. Therefore, she also thought that Xinbi was her Mr. Right. If you dare to betray me, I promise that I'll castrate you, Kao Wenxin said. Ha ha. Xinbi was amused. Don't do that. I needed to have a happy sex life with you. Hearing that, Kao Wenxin flushed and Xinbi kissed her again. In the following hour, they enjoyed each other's body. The next morning, Gunning and Leng Shouting went to the He family's house for the appreciation lunch. Once Gunning and Leng Shouting showed up, he Hongji welcomed them with great enthusiasm and repeatedly thanked Gunning. He thanked Gunning for everything that she had done for the He family. Although he still couldn't tell the specific numbers of the dice by listening to it, his hearing was much better than before. He didn't have much hope that he could fully recover from his hearing problem. However, what he didn't know was that his hearing would be excellent again or even better after taking the pills that Gunning gave him. The magical power crystal wasn't normal medicine after all. After that, He Hongji told Gunning that there were several skilled gamblers in the gambling industry who had the interest to gamble against her. In He Hongji's eyes, there was no need for Gunning to gamble with the other skilled gamblers since the gambling magnate of City M already invited her. Even though those skilled gamblers were as famous as the gambling magnate of City M in the gambling industry, they were good at different forms of gambling. Nevertheless, it was He Hongji's opinion, not Gunning's. Gunning, on the other hand, thought that it was a good chance to make more money, so she obviously wouldn't turn them down. She was going to City M anyway, so she could meet the other skilled gamblers the two. However, before she accepted the challenge from the other skilled gamblers, she had to tell Yika Auction about it. She was going to City M to meet him after all, so she needed to show respect towards him. Yika Auction agreed with her on her decision. He was curious to see whether Tang Aining could beat all of them in gambling. All in all, 
Yi Kaokshin didn't think that Ganning was a threat to him. He proposed to hold the gambling competition at the Yi family's casino in City M. Ganning had the same idea. After talking to Yi Kaokshin, Ganning told He Hongji that she was willing to gamble against the other skilled gamblers. Those skilled gamblers were excited and full of anticipation when they heard Ganning's answer. They weren't worse than Fan Zihao. So they dared to challenge Tang Aining who had defeated him by a significant margin. If they could beat Tang Aining in the next gambling competition, they would gain a lot of fame. He Hongji was super interested in the grand gambling competition which was going to be held in City M. But he had to stay in HK to deal with his family affairs, so he had to miss it. Infinite Horror had been dubbed for several days, but encountered a bottleneck because the movie was too scary and many voice actors were scared, so it took a much longer time for the voice actors to finish their job this time. Luzan understood it very well, because he had also been scared many times when he had watched the film. Chapter 905 Can Infinite Horror Be Shown in Theaters? After a few days, the movie was done, and they handed it to the authority for a check. The movie was even scarier when it was well done, because of Tang Bingson. The movie didn't pass the censorship at all and was put aside. It wasn't a surprising result, because everyone in Feng Wu Entertainment was aware that Tang Bingson had shut Lu Zan out of the film industry, but they turned it to their advantage and gained a lot of attention for the film. Although it didn't pass the censorship, they could still publicize it by posting its trailer on the internet. This film had gained many people's attention before, so it easily became a hot topic again on social media. Many influencers on Weiber reposted the trailer, including Feng Wu Entertainment, Lu Zan, Fang Tang, Lu Yai's and so forth. Infinite Horror soon went viral on the web. After watching the trailer of Infinite Horror, many people were scared and attracted to it. A lot of internet users left positive comments on it. OMG, I was almost scared to death when I watched the trailer. It's the scariest horror film I've ever seen. I'm afraid that I'll keep yelling and screaming if I go to watch it in a theater. Me too. Well, I personally enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to seeing the whole film. I think that this horror film is well edited, and it seems like those Hollywood blockbusters. I agree, the female ghost in the film is so beautiful. The leading actress is Su Tong Nguo. Oh, I love her. When can we watch it in theaters? I can't wait to watch it. Right when everyone was asking for the movie schedule, someone disappointed them. I don't think that we can watch the film in theaters. Its director is Luzan and he's already been shut out of the film industry. Couldn't Feng Wu Entertainment do something about it? I heard that Luzan has annoyed an influential figure in the capital, so it's hard to tell. Middle dot middle dot middle dot. Within a short time, the news that Infinite Horror probably wouldn't be shown in theaters went abroad. At the same time, more and more internet users discussed about it. The majority believed that it wasn't likely that they could see infinite horror in theaters. Tang Bingson was paying attention to it the entire time. He didn't care about those comments and discussions on the internet because they couldn't affect him. If Feng Wu Entertainment dared act against him, he would take action to teach them a lesson. He knew that Feng Wu Entertainment wasn't weak, but he didn't think that it was his match. In the afternoon, Infinite Horror caused a greater sensation on social media. Shengxi Group, Tang Wang Group, Jinlin Group, Kingwa Group, Heike Group, Jade Beauty Jewelry, Cole Pharmaceutical Company, Charm, and many other famous companies reposted the trailer of Infinite Horror too. Even Gunning herself also reposted it. Jesus, I can't believe my eyes. There are so many famous business groups and companies that side with Fenwu Entertainment. It reminds me of the release conference of Jade Beauty Jewelry. Does God Iska have any connection with Fenwu Entertainment? I have the same feeling. No way. Goddesska is only involved in the jewelry and clothing industries. She could also be involved in many other industries. Oh, Goddesska just reposted the trailer of Infinite Horror. OMG. Even Godiska supports it. I think it's very likely that we can watch infinite horror in theaters. I don't think that the influential figure that Luzan annoyed in the capital is more powerful than the above business groups and companies. I have an increasingly strong feeling that Godiska has a connection with Feng Wu Entertainment. Me too. Adganing, Godesku, what's your relationship with Feng Wu Entertainment? Middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot. 
Many internet users mentioned at Gunning on Weibo, but Gunning didn't respond to them. Gunning was on her way to City M right now. She also disguised herself as Tang Aining before she got on the ship. Although the makeup process was a bit cumbersome, it was the best way to prevent too many people from knowing her real face. HK was very close to City M, so there was no need for them to take a plane. Chapter 906 Yi Jiaxing. Within several hours, Infinite Horror became the hottest topic on all kinds of websites. More and more people joined the discussions about Gunning's relationship with Feng Wu Entertainment. Many onlookers were shocked that topics about Gunning could always gain so much attention on social media. They had to admit that Gunning could easily attract people's attention, which was an unusual skill. In the meantime, Many people also thought that Gunning might soon consume all of her popularity. Everything happened fast in the entertainment industry. No matter how popular a star was right now, he or she would soon be forgotten by the audience and the public. Therefore, some were waiting to see how Gunning was going to disappear from people's sight. Gunning had many fans. But there were many haters who expressed their disapproval of her all the time on the internet as well. It was impossible to be liked by every person. In the chairman's office of the Tang family's business group, Tang Bingson's secretary reported the latest news about infinite horror to him. The authorities also called to tell him that the film was going to be shown in theaters. How can Feng Wu Entertainment be so influential? I need to know everything about the girl named Gunning right now. Tang Bingson shouted in anger. Tang Bingson had investigated Gunning before, but he only knew that she was an ordinary girl from a third tier city, so he took her lightly. To his astonishment, she had support from so many powerful business groups and companies. He was utterly stressed now, because he didn't dare to mess with them. It wasn't a secret that Luzan had been shut out of the film industry by him. So if those powerful people were still supportive, it was an obvious warning to him. The authorities were also unwilling to be involved in this mess. Yes, sir, his secretary said, then left. It was very easy to search for information about Gunning on the internet now, and the secretary soon found out a lot. After reading the news about her, the secretary was amazed. Chairman Tang, this girl named Gunning isn't ordinary at all. The secretary ran back to Tang Bingson's office with a laptop. Tang Bingson frowned after hearing that. All of a sudden, he had a premonition. Let me have a look, Tang Bingson said in a hurry. The secretary placed the laptop in front of Tang Bingson at once. Tang Bingson was also stunned after reading the news about Gunning. It seemed that Gunning was much more influential than he thought. It was hard not to be surprised by Gunning's achievements given her young age. No wonder Gunning dared to act against him. She had so many connections. Tang Bingson made a wrong decision this time. However, he didn't think that Gunning was acting against him on purpose because he didn't know Gunning at all and believed that Gunning had never met him before either. It was just a business conflict in his eyes. In that case, Tang Bingson disliked Gunning, but wouldn't do anything to hurt her for now. In this society, whoever had more support from more powerful people would win, so Tang Bingson had to give in. Around half an hour later, Gunning arrived at City M. There was a car arranged by Yi Kaoch to pick them up waiting for them at the wharf. Yi Kaoch attached great importance to Gunning's arrival, so he sent his second son, Yi Jiaxing, to pick her up. Although Yi Jiaxing was the second son in the Yi family, he was the heir of it, because Yi Kaoch's eldest son was merely a playboy and good for nothing. Yi Jiaxing, on the contrary, was excellent at both business and gambling. All in all, Yi Jiaxing was the sole heir of the Yi family. Unfortunately, members of the Yi family didn't get along as well as those in the He family. Although Yi Kaoqing's eldest son wasn't qualified to take over the family's business, he always believed that he should be the heir of his family. He had no ability to compete against Yi Jiaxing, but had caused a lot of trouble for his family, which had been made them into public jokes. If he dared to hurt the Yi family's benefits in the future, Yi Kaoqing would force him to live in another city. Miss Tang, nice to meet you. My name is Yi Jiaxing. Yi Jiaxing politely said to Gunning when they met each other. Yi Jiaxing was about 30 years old, and he was a very handsome, mature man with a pair of attractive and dangerous eyes. He seemed to be polite and gentle but could be cruel and aggressive when it was necessary. It wasn't sensible to judge a person from his or her appearance. Gunning was his family's distinguished guest, so he treated her kindly. Nice to meet you too, 
Mr. Yi. Gunning greeted him politely, and shook hands with him. Even though their hands just touched each other for a second, Leng Shouting was displeased. Nevertheless, he was just her bodyguard today, so he had to disguise his feelings. Please follow me this way, Miss Tang. Yi Ji Ashing made a handed gesture, then guided them to an MPV. Miss Tang, why don't you have a rest in the hotel first, and we can have dinner together at 5.30 p.m. before we leave for the casino, Yi Ji Ashing said. No problem, Gunning replied. Chapter 907, An Unusual Woman, it was 3.30 p.m., and Gunning could rest in the hotel for nearly two hours. Miss Tang, after the gambling competition in HK, you're the most famous figure in the gambling industry right now. I have a feeling that you're going to make a fortune again this time, Yi Ji Ashing said. Fan Zihao was an ex-apprentice of his father, and they had gotten along for many years, so he knew Fan Zihao's gambling ability very well. Therefore, Gunning had to be really good at gambling if she could defeat Fan Zihao. He wasn't better than Fan Zihao at gambling, so he had no confidence that he could beat Gunning. As for his father, he wasn't sure that his father could be the winner either. In fact, it was unlikely that his father was going to win. Mr. Yi, it seems like you don't have much confidence in your father. Don't forget that your father is the gambling magnate of City M. Gunning joked although she clearly knew that it was true that Yi Kaok couldn't win. My father can't be as accurate as you are in gambling. Yi Ji Ashing laughed a little. Gunning smiled but didn't say anything. Yi Ji Ashing wasn't a talkative person, so they stopped chatting after a short while. Half an hour later, a group of them reached a five-star hotel in City M, which was owned by the Yi family. The Yi family booked two presidential suites for Gunning and her people. Afterwards, Yi Ji Ashing called Yi Ka Auction and told him that Gunning was already in the hotel. Yi Ka Auction would join them at dinner to show that he recognized the importance of Gunning's arrival. Leng Shouting didn't have enough time to have sex with Gunning in their room, but they still kissed and touched each other passionately. When it was almost 5.30 p.m., Yi Ji Ashing called Gunning again, and they went to dine together in a private room of the hotel. Before long, the dishes were placed on the table. They finished dinner before 7.30 p.m. while the gambling competition would begin at 8 p.m., so they still had a little time. However, a brief interlude of drama happened when they had just reached the hall of the hotel. Three women walked inside at this moment, and one of them who was tall and beautiful ran towards Yi Jiaxing the moment she saw him. Jiaxing. The woman called him in a little girl's voice which disgusted everyone. It clearly wasn't her natural voice. Miss J, stop the please. Yi Ji Ashing frowned and moved a few steps backwards. Why do you call me Miss J? You can just call me Manlin, J. Manlin said in annoyance, but still pouted, acting cute. She was very beautiful, but it was disgusting when she played cute with a mature face. Miss J, I'm sorry I've got to go now. Yi Ji Ashing didn't want to argue with J. Manlin. Come on. I seldom see you these days. Why don't we dine together? Jim Manlin said, and reached out her hand to hold Yi Ji Ashing's arm, but Yi Ji Ashing avoided it at once. Miss Ji, I don't have time, nor interest, Yi Ji Ashing said. His voice was a little cold now. Jim Manlin, however, didn't notice that and wouldn't let him go. Couldn't you spend some time with me? You're always so busy. Lord Yi, do you have an appointment with this girl? The other two women walked over, they were all so pretty, but weren't prettier than Gunning, so they were jealous of her. Hearing that, Jim Manlin's sight fell on Gunning, and a touch of malice flashed in her eyes when she saw that Gunning was unusually beautiful. Jia Xing, who is she? Jim Manlin questioned him in anger. You rejected me because of her? Leng Shouting who stood behind Gunning was displeased in an instant. Miss J, please mind your words. This lady is a distinguished guest of my family, and we have just met each other. Yi Ji Ashing was also mad. In addition, you have no right to interfere in my personal affairs. Yu Ji Manlin was furious, then pretended to be sad. How can you say that to me? I like you so much but you, it's your own business that you like me, but I have no interest in you, Yi Ji Ashing said in a cold tone, he couldn't dislike Jim Anlin more, Lord Yi, 
What do you mean? Aren't you and Manlin a perfect match? Exactly. Manlin is a well-educated and beautiful girl from a super rich family, which isn't interior to your family. How could you say that you have no interest in Manlin? Jim Manlin's friends defended her without delay, but it sounded so ridiculous. Even though they had the same outstanding background, it didn't mean that they would be a great match. A romantic relationship relied on many factors after all. In fact, Yi Ji Ashing had only tolerated Jim Anlin's behavior for a long time because Jim Anlin's father had a relationship with his family. Gunning thought that the three women were stupid, but it wasn't her business, so she remained silent. I just dislike being forced to like someone. Yi Ji Ashing was in a rage now, and stared straight at them, which scared them. Once Yi Ji Ashing got mad, he was very threatening. Seeing Yi Ji Ashing being so mad, they didn't dare to say another word. They were weak women after all. Chapter 908, The Gambling Magnate of City M. Miss Tang, let's go. Yi Ji Ashing said to Gunning, and Jim Anlin didn't dare to stop him again. When they walked away, Yi Ji Ashing apologized to Gunning, Miss Tang, I'm so sorry for what just happened. It's fine, Gunning said. Jim Anlin was annoyed by Yi Ji Ashing's attitude towards her. How could he treat me like that? She felt aggrieved, and thought that she was innocent. Even though she knew that Yi Ji Ashing disliked her, she didn't care. She liked him, which was enough in her eyes. Moreover, she wanted to marry him. Manlin, I think you should forget him. Right? There are plenty other fish in the sea after all. Jim Manlin's friends tried to persuade her to give it up, because they thought that Yi Ji Ashing wasn't as gentle as he looked. Jim Manlin, however, refused to listen to her friends. No, I like him, and I'm determined to get him. Seeing that, Jim Manlin's friends closed their mouths. There is nothing to look at. Jim Manlin suddenly shouted at the onlookers in the hall. Afterwards, Jim Manlin walked on her high heels to the reception desk and asked with arrogance, who was the girl by Lord Yi's side just then. She still believed that Gunning had an unusual relationship with Yi Jiaxing. She was really a self-centered and spoiled woman. I'm sorry, Miss Ji. We have no idea, the receptionist said and apologized. Check the register. Jim Manlin ordered. Sorry, Miss Ji. We're not allowed to leak out guests' information and the girl didn't register her name either, the receptionist replied, there was nothing else that Jim Anlin could do now, she snorted with disdain, then left with her friends, it was already 7.30 pm when Gunning arrived at the Yi family's casino, so it was still half an hour away from the gambling competition, those skilled gamblers were waiting for her in the hall, there were four of them in all, because it was rare to see an ace gambler in the gambling industry, as the host of today's gathering, Yi Kaoqing also appeared at 7.20 p.m. Coincidentally, Gunning ran into Yi Kaoqing at the gate. The second that Gunning appeared in Yi Kaoqing's sight, he recognized her and greeted her. Miss Tang, nice to meet you. Yi Kaoqing was nearly 60 years old and had an air of power and authority. Ordinary people might feel scared facing him. Even the younger generation in the Yi family stood in awe of him. Yi Jiayu, the eldest son of the Yi family, no matter how troublesome he was, was also afraid of his father. Master Yi, it's so nice to meet you too. Gunning greeted him politely but with confidence. Yi Kaoqing was impressed by her relaxed attitude. Miss Tang, shall we go inside now? Yi Kaoqing invited her. After you, Master Yi, Gunning said with great respect. After that, they walked in together. People outside were all excited when Yi Kaoqing appeared. It wasn't easy to see the gambling magnate of City M in real life. However they were confused when Yi Kaoqing welcomed Gunning in person. The onlookers didn't know that they just ran into each other at the gate, so they misunderstood. Yi Kaoqing and Gunning took the exclusive elevator to the sixth floor. Because of the limited amount of attendees, Yi Kaoqing set the gambling competition in a separate luxurious private room. Since Yi Kaoqing would be coming, the others didn't dare to be late, so they were seated in the private room before 7.30 pm, discussing Tang Aining. They held different attitudes towards Tang Aining. Some admired her and simply wanted to challenge her, while some made up their minds to defeat her. Do you think that Tang Aining can defeat all of us? A man asked curiously. Hard to tell, another man said. Come on. We came here in order to defeat her, 
right? Although she did defeat Fan Zihao in HK last time, it doesn't mean that she's the best gambler in the gambling industry, right? But I heard that she was never wrong in sick bow and five card stud. She even won all the chips in the prize pool of the slot machine several times. Don't be naive. The He family must have cheated in the game. The result of the competition decided the future of the He family, so it's impossible that they wouldn't do anything about it. It wasn't a secret that casinos played dirty tricks sometimes after all. But either way, they admitted that Tang Aining was a great match for them. Chapter 909 to 1 versus 1. The door was pushed open, and they stopped discussing at once. The second Yi Kaok walked inside, they stood up and welcomed him with great respect. Master Yi, good evening. They were all younger and less experienced than Yi Kaok, so they had to be respectful of him. Have a seat, please, Yi Kaok said. The next second, they noticed Gunning, and recognized that she was Tang Aining at first glance because photos and videos of her were everywhere on the internet now. This must be Miss Tang, right? Someone looked at Gunning. Nice to meet you all, I'm Tang Aining, Gunning said with confidence. She had a vague air of nobility that nobody could ignore. Some thought that Gunning was a noble lady, while some believed that she was pretending to be noble. Miss Tang. I admire your outstanding gambling skills at such a young age. I heard that Miss Tang was never wrong in sick bow and five card stud, which is rare to see in the gambling industry. Middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot middle dot. They kept complimenting Gunning, but only a few really meant it. Some of them believed that Gunning had her own skills, while some thought that the He family must have cheated in the game. Gunning understood that they held different opinions towards her. But she didn't care about that. Yi Kaok also noticed that, but he said nothing for Gunning. Actions spoke louder than words. If Gunning really had her own skills, she could show that in the following games. If Gunning couldn't defeat them, she would have to face their criticism or even ridicule. That was the cruel truth of this society. Thank you all for your compliments, but I think that other than skill, luck is also very important in gambling, Gunning said. Miss Tang is being modest. Someone said. Some also thought that she was hypocritical. They believed that she couldn't cheat again in front of them in the Yi family's casino. Different people indeed had different opinions towards the same thing. It's a shame that we missed the gambling competition in HK, and we're honored today to witness Miss Tang's gambling skills, a man said. He was challenging Gunning. Gunning wasn't mad at all. I'm flattered, and I still need to learn from you all. All right. Let's stop wasting time on talking. Why don't we play the game right now? They couldn't wait for it. Afterwards, they were all seated around the gambling table. It was a two meter long and one meter wide oval gaming table, and Gunning sat in the middle right across from the banker. Three people sat on Gunning's left side, while two were on her right. Yi Kaok was seated next to the banker. They purposely let Gunning sit in the middle so that they could clearly observe her movements. Although there were seven people around the table, Yi Kaok wouldn't join them, so the amount of players was six in all. Yi Kaok would gamble against Gunning alone later. Those skilled gamblers came here to challenge Gunning, not Yi Kaok after all. As top gamblers in the gambling industry of City M, they had competed with Yi Kaok more than once before, but none of them had won. If Yi Kaok joined the game right now, they were doomed to fail. How much is the bet? Someone asked before the game began. It's up to you. Gunning didn't mind. She could accept it no matter how much the bet was. But it couldn't be a little. Well, since we are only gambling for fun, I think the bet shouldn't be too much. How about a million you earn around? Someone proposed. They were all rich people and could afford a bet of 10 million yuan, but it wasn't necessary. A million yuan around was already a lot. Besides, they knew how much Fan Zihao had lost to Gunning last time, so they had to be cautious. Everyone agreed, and the bet was set as a million yuan around. After that, each of them exchanged 100 chips with 100 million yuan. What should we play? Why don't we play sick bow first? Each of us can gamble against Miss Tang 1 versus 1 for 3 rounds. Nobody disagreed. If they played together, it wouldn't be fair because they were all ace gamblers and it was 60% possible for every one of them to tell the correct scores. If they played sick bow 1 versus 1, they could know who was better. Gunning agreed. They played the game from the left to right. 
So the first person on Gunning's left started to shake the dice cup. Once the dice cup was lifted, the others all focused on it although they didn't join this round. Gunning, on the other hand, seemed relaxed while enjoying her tea. Seeing that, Yika Auction squinted at her with doubts. The others also felt confused. Miss Tang, do you have your answer? The dice cup was placed on the table. Five, five, six. 16, Gunning said. Hearing that, everyone was surprised. Although they weren't sure that the numbers in the dice cup were 5, 5, and 6, they thought that it was highly possible. Most importantly, Gunning directly told them the specific numbers. She was so confident. The dice cup was opened, and Gunning was indeed right. The result impressed the others once more because none of them were able to tell the specific numbers of the dice. They were certain that Tang Aining didn't cheat, and had to admit that she was really unbelievable at gambling. The odds of 16 were 18-1, and Gunning gave the correct specific numbers, so the odds doubled to be 36-1. After the first round, Gunning won 36 million yuan. Chapter 910, Gunning wins every time. 36 chips were placed in front of Gunning at once but they weren't hers yet, because the game would go on. It was Gunning's turn to shake the dice cup now. If her competitor failed to give the correct score of the dice, those chips would be Gunning's. However, if Gunning's competitor was right, Gunning had to return the chips to him. 36 million yuan was a lot, and nobody was willing to lose it within just a few minutes. Gunning shook the dice cup casually. Her competitor, on the other hand, focused on it from the beginning to the end. She put the dice cup down, and let her competitor guess. Her competitor wasn't as bold as Gunning, who had given the specific numbers of the dice. Even Yika Auction wasn't confident that he could do that. There is a pair of three inside, he said. Gunning opened the dice cup, and there was indeed a pair of three in it. Her competitor released a long breath after seeing it. He was more nervous than ever now. The odds of pairs were 8-1. Therefore, he could only take 8 chips back, and the other 28 chips were Gunning's. In the second round, Gunning gave the correct specific numbers again, and the odds were 16-1. Everyone was surprised by her once more. Is it possible that Tang Aining can win every time? Even Yika Auction can't do that. They subconsciously compared Yika Auction with Gunning. In that case, they admitted that Gunning was better than them. They were all losers when gambling with Yika Auction anyway. Gunning's competitor lost 10 million yuan after the second round. Although Gunning's competitors could tell the scores, they still lost money, because Gunning could always double the odds and win a lot more money than them. The same thing happened in the third round, and Gunning's competitor was completely disappointed now. He began to think that he could never win a round in the gambling competition against Gunning. Once he had that idea in his mind, he couldn't pay full attention to the dice cup, so he lost again. Gunning, however, won 23 million yuan after the third round. After the three rounds with her first competitor, Gunning won 61 million yuan in all. The first competitor, on the other hand, lost 61 million yuan within several minutes. It was the first time that he had lost so much money within such a short time. It was unacceptable in his eyes. Although he lost a fortune and was in despair now, he had to pretend to be calm. Miss Tang, you win, he said. Gunning didn't say anything, but just smiled. Seeing the result, the others were all shocked. Some of them even wanted to retreat but it was too embarrassing to do that. The second competitor didn't have a much better result than the first one. He lost 58 million yuan in all. The rest of the people were increasingly unwilling to compete against Gunning, because they clearly knew that they were going to lose. The third, fourth, and fifth competitor gave up the idea that they wanted to defeat Gunning, but did their best to lose as little as possible. It turned out that all of them lost money to Gunning. After competing against the five of them, Gunning won 256 million yuan in the end. Everyone was amazed by her unerring accuracy, including Yi Ji Ashing and Yi Ka Auction. Even though they had heard of what Tang Aining had done in the gambling competition held in HK last time, they were still amazed when they witnessed it with their own eyes. They always believed that Tang Aining or the He family must have cheated in the game but they were wrong. It was as if Tang Aining could see the numbers of the dice in the dice cup. They even thought that maybe she had a pair of jade eyes. Those skilled gamblers used to think that Yika Auction could defeat Tang Aining, 
but given what they had just been through, they thought that Tang Aining was more likely to win. Yi Kao Ching actually had the same idea, although he knew that he was going to lose, he was still very interested in the game, because it aroused his desire for victory. They now knew that Gunning was unbelievably good at sick bow, but they still hoped that she couldn't be as good at other forms of gambling. In that case, they proposed to play five card stud. Gunning agreed. Nevertheless, Gunning was still able to win as long as she was in. After playing ten rounds, Gunning won 180 million yuan in all. Those skilled gamblers couldn't believe their eyes, and proposed to play back a R1 against Gunning, but Gunning was still the winner and won 160 million yuan in all. They couldn't be more disappointed right now, and gave up the idea of playing with Gunning again. After playing three forms of gambling, Gunning won 596 million yuan in all. The bet was only a million yuan around, but Gunning still won a fortune. 1. Bakara or Bakaro is a card game played at casinos. It is a comparing card game played between two hands. The player and the banker. 